If you got a thousand dollars, I would like just keep investing in yourself until you got another thousand. And then invest in yourself. Now you got two thousand invested in you. You should start making money faster. At some point you should start like every time you make an investment in yourself, if I put fuel in my car, it's supposed to take me five. So if I invest in myself, you know, there's things I bought that I didn't get a return on right away. But I didn't quit investing in a course or a workshop or a training or education because it didn't work. I spent 17 years going to school. None of it was any good for me. But it did teach me how to go to school, how to study, how to go there, how to complete a course. I completed college. I I think you just got to keep investing in you until like, oh, oh now I'm making three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We invest all that again. But what we do is we start taking it off the table, right? I think people just need to get on that cycle of like, okay, I'm going to keep repeating this activity. I'm going to reinvest some money in myself, go to the workshop or whatever. I got to be hustling again. until, okay, now I got four thousand dollars. Okay, now I got five thousand. Now the income's starting to pick up. Income has to pick up. The income should be an indication that whatever you're learning is helping. Until one day you're like, okay, I have more money here than I can actually invest in myself. I can go to right. to get. Get rid of this money. You need to get rid of that money though. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Grant Cardone and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two, focus on making money. If I did it all over again today, I would the first thing I would learn today is the money game. I believe this is the single most important thing your staff can learn, your executives can learn, uh, your, your financial person, your CEO. By the way, the person, your CFO, your, your chief financial officer, they don't even know anything about finances. What they, actually, actually, let me change that. It's not that they don't know anything about finances. What they know is actually one of the people holding you back. Uh. The uh, KPI, the return, the met, we're not getting a ROI on this investment. The return on investment is terrible. This is not a good return. You know, like, like you, you gotta understand, they're counting money. They're not creating it, right? So our expenses are too high. We need to reduce our expenses and we pay salespeople too much money. In our, in our company, number one most important protected group in the company is the sales team. I think we're gonna overpay anybody. If we overpay anybody, it is the guy and the gal that is going out bringing in the kill. That's right. Okay, so the income line, man, this money thing, this money game, this is, this is how a financial statement works. Income. Expenses net, okay? I, I screwed the whole deal up. I spent more time on this line than I did on this line. How many of you know people do this? Reduce the expenses, reduce the expenses, reduce the expenses, reduce the expenses. How low can you go to zero? How high can you fly? See, I can take this number to infinity. I can only take this number to zero. Everybody agree? So I spend today 95% of my time on income and less than 5% of my time on expenses. So your, your, your financial officer is spending all their time on what? Oh, uh, this expense and that expense and where this went and where that went. Uh, I saw Brandon the other night, we went to dinner with Brandon and some of his clients some of his very, very special elite clients. And um, we were having dinner and, and, and Brandon, when the bill came and Brandon picked up the bill and, and, and he took a picture of it. I said, well, why are you taking a picture of it? Well, to send this to, the, to whoever collects history. Because once it's an expense, it's history. Everybody agree? Now, have you ever gotten rich off of history? And that's what accountants do. They record history, something that was done. Where's your, where's your future gonna come from? Income is the future, right? So I spend 95% of my time on two things, marketing and income. And if I spend too much, big deal. I'm gonna go find, this is the solution to all my problems, marketing and income. Everybody agree? 
I'm going to go expand Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Google. Dude, they don't worry about their expenses. They're like, how much can we spend? How many people can we hire? How big can we get? How long can we bleed? And one day we'll own the world. Rule number three, get more productive. A lot of people don't get who I am because, you know, because I'm brash and I'm bodacious and I do. And I probably just say things wrong. And I don't, I don't really think through how I'm going to say something. I just say it and then let it, the chips fall where they fall. But I want the people around me doing well. Like, I don't want to, I'm not the guy, I'm, I'm here by myself today, but most of the time I'm rolling with a crew. I want them all doing well. I want those guys making money. I don't want people suffering around me. I want people, I know that when we go someplace, they want to pay the bill too. When the, wine, the, when the wine list comes out, I know the guys I work with are like, hey Grant, whatever, whatever you want, bro, just get it on me. Everybody wants to pay that big check. So, I think, I, I, you know, the way to 10X is to make sure you're doing well and 10 other people, mm. nine other people are doing well. Mm. That's a big 10X. You know, you fix your house and nine other houses on the street. Or you don't fix the houses. You, you, you get the neighborhood in a condition where everybody's fixing their own house and the, the value of the neighborhood comes up. And then the schools, and then you reach out 10X further than that, and the schools are better. And then the firemen are getting taken care of, the police. Or maybe we don't even need a police department anymore because everybody's so freaking sane now. Mm. People aren't killing each other. Yeah. And not hating on each other, not beating their wives. Like the, the, the amount of dumb stuff we do, and that I've done, when I'm, when, I, when I'm working, when I'm on course, when I'm, like, when I'm, you know, I'm not bothering other people. I think if everybody just got more productive on fulfilling their own potential, nobody would have time for wars, drugs. You, you wouldn't even have time to go find a drug dealer. You'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'll get, I'll get it later. <laughs> you know, I'll get it later, but right now I got this. If I can make it, I have not collaborated with other people. I didn't come for money. I had no connections. I have refused to like not be myself. And yet somehow I made it. And so the, the one thing is like, if you just don't quit, if you don't quit, if you refuse to quit, you will not fail. Rule number four, follow your gut. I disregard my feelings. Like, like my feelings, you know, feelings are overrated in our society. Like, you, you, you literally sound they, like me. <laughs> they're, they're, you're, you're, they're, 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 they're going to mislead you. They're not, i got to follow my gut. No, no, I don't even know what you're talking about. You, most people don't even know where their gut is. Their gut, your gut is a, 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 it's a stomach. It's called a stomach, okay? It's not designed to lead you. It's designed to digest food. <laughs> so, so I, I don't, I follow the data, mm. right? And, and my emotions, my emotions, fear would keep me from doing, fear has kept me from doing, I should be, I should be a billionaire eight or nine times right now. What is it still fear, you doing? fear kept me from doing these, the deals I'm doing today, fear kept me from doing 20 years ago. So what were you actually afraid of? I, I was afraid, I, I lacked confidence in, in the data. I didn't, I didn't trust the data. I knew, I have known for years this little space that I'm in um, I mean, in so many different places, but particularly in the real estate, I've known for years that there was going to be a massive shift in America, particularly, and maybe around the world, to where people will no longer buy homes and they will live, they will, they will lease where they live mm -hmm. and they will move around the country and their mobility will become a big thing. Mm -hmm. And I knew that, I knew that, but I did, I should have put every penny, I should have borrowed more money, I should, I should own 40,000 units down, not... Uh, seven thousand. Mm. So maybe maybe seventy thousand. I could be one of the biggest landowners in America today had I followed my in, my my data, my instincts that was backed by data, mm. rather than my feelings and listening to the numb nuts around me that are like, don't do it, don't take the risk, you don't need to, you already have enough. All you're going to do is like all that input from other people. You know, we I bought a I bought a plane uh, maybe three or four years ago, and I've, I've taken a bunch of heat about the plane because people are like, oh, he's showing off his plane. Look, if you had a guy, if you had a jet, you would show it off too. And if you didn't show it to people, uh, shame on you. Like, it's inspiration for most people, not envy. 
Right. For most people, they're like, dude, that inspires me. Uh, Mark Wright was here yesterday. Mm-hmm. He was on, uh, you, you know Mark? I've, was the, what show was he on? He was on Apprentice. He was the Apprentice from oh, Lord Sherry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he flew with me from Cardiff to uh, London last year. I put him on the plane. He says, Grant, you ruined my whole life putting me on that plane. I can't think, like, every time I get on a plane now, I'm like, oh, my God, I need that to fly private. It, it, it is a light, it is a ruiner. And this is what, like, if I inspire people to think bigger, that, that is one of my goals because that has been the big ruin of my life, that I didn't think big enough the whole time. The big, single biggest regret I have in my life, I played it small for at least 35 years. Mm. Influenced by society, education, friends, even friends with good intentions, family members that love me, you know, they're, they're the wrong people to let the, the you know, the falconry I did yesterday, the, the, one of these birds, the peregrine, para, para something, moves at 200 miles an hour, makes an aerial strike, kills on contact, like, it's like, wow, man. It only, had, it only, it only does three things in its life. It either kills you, gets killed by you or has sex with you simple what a life also to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video i've designed a special free worksheet just for this video the worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something the worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, learn the finance game. You guys have to learn this finance game. It's a different game than your your moms and dad, uncles and aunts and your gramps Mm -hmm. played. Okay, they were trying to pay everything off. They were trying to earn money. You really in 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 today's society, you don't really want to earn money. You have to do that in the beginning. But what you want to do is you want to get money or equity. You really want money to become equity. Mm-hmm. And you want the equity to go up. Elon Musk posted or tweeted Sunday. He's like, I know there's a lot of talk about the capital gains tax. He said, but you guys need to understand. And there's a lot of talk about billionaires paying taxes. He's like, You guys need to understand, I don't earn income. I can, I only pay taxes when I sell shares of my Tesla. And, and, and so like people need to understand that's the game. You know, my dad wanted to earn more money. Mm -hmm. My dad wanted to get into the middle class. My dad wanted a better job. My dad wanted to have more money so he could buy a house, so he could pay it off. He could, he could buy life insurance for the family. He could pay that off. He could uh, have money left over for a savings account or a money market or, you know, stuff. Right. But but you see, that's not the game, guys. The game is to study the top, the top wealthiest people in the world. And what they're doing is they're they're getting Jay-Z talks about equity. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, you going you going for the advance. I'm going for the equity. You know, and and when you're on the up, when you're trying to get up, you're trying to get that advance. You want the bag so bad that we never learn how to keep it. And then we never learn how to multiply it. Rule number six, get multiple sources of income. I'm out. I have one income in the beginning. And and what do I need? What do I need in addition to one income? I need a second income that I ideally don't have to work for. Okay. I don't want the second income to take attention from the first income. This is where people make a big mistake. They go out and get one income. They bust in their ass to get one income. And then they go invest in a second thing, start a second company. And the second company makes the first income half the income because they don't pay attention to it anymore. I wanted my first income to grow, my second income to take zero attention from me. So what I did was I took money from the first, threw it in real estate, like I'm showing you in the back here that's playing on my TV right now. This is a deal we're doing right now. Put the money in the real estate. I don't lose my money. I know it's not going to go down in value. It's supported by cash flow. And three, I just wait for the growth of rent. So all we buy is, and and this is why I would say no to people on Bitcoin right now and Ethereum, any of the coins. Number one, you could lose your money. If if, if, If you're just getting started, you don't lose money, man. Number two, you're not getting income. None of the coins pay income. 
Crypto does not pay income. And if you're 25, 35 years old, you need income, not just a score. Now, all that being said, how does, how does uh, my real estate compare to crypto or Amazon? Well, I can tell you that that piece of real estate that I'm showing you right there, I'm going to pay $230 million for that. I'm going to sell it for a half a billion dollars. And I'm going to be paid to wait for a, for 100% return on the total price. But because it's the real estate, I, only, I don't pay the whole price. I'll pay about $70 million for that property. $70 million will become $500 million, uh, which is about a 6x return with no threat of loss, income while I wait, and great tax advantages. Rule number seven, be honest with yourself. I always thought that I could do something. I, I, I think everybody thinks. Do you think everyone does that? Yeah, I think everybody does. I think every person thinks that they're special. But do you think? If they would, if they would be really honest and not, not, I think that they have the thought and then and then they're like, I can't tell anybody that. Because that why people judge them. Well, they will judge them. They, yeah. they will judge them. Like your parents will tell you you're special until you start acting like you're special and then they want to medicate you. <laughs> so like, oh, you're so special, you know? He's so special, right? And, and, then, and then, then special becomes a problem. Somewhere between, I don't know, eight years old and 15, special takes on a different meaning than if, than if you're 24 months old. And then, and then it becomes a problem for the adults, mm -hmm. right? So I think everyone is special. I think if everybody got really quiet and anything, you could say anything, they, everybody would be like, yeah, dude, I got this special little thing. I got this superpower. I got this, you know, this thing. And then what happens is it gets squelched. For me, I squelched it so hard. I suppressed it and pushed it down so Why? hard. Be because, because I was told to. Like, it was not... The, the my surroundings did not like me exhibiting my my special right so so you know because because I was awkward with special mm -hmm. like in the beginning you don't know how to use it yeah. so for me I've always been very uh, rough uh, I was in Dubai and this lady says oh my god I love meeting this guy she was I, sh I saw her write an article about me I love meeting this guy he's a bit rough. <laughs> But, but, and I've always been that. I've always been very kind of, the edges are jagged. Do you think there's a reason for that? Because I, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out mm -hmm. and, and still be me mm -hmm. without, without suppressing who I am, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, I, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm very playful. Uh, I'm immature. I, I, I love pranks. Uh, I like having fun more than I like anything. Like I want to have fun, but I want the fun. But but then I then I'm, I become very serious when it's time to work. So mm -hmm. I go from this very playful person to this extremely intense. Uh, Hardworking. Like, like it, 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 can, it can happen in, in a in a in a micro of a second. Yeah. yeah. That we could be you know screwing around doing something dumb to okay now we're in a deal. Mm. And the phone's on, and I, like I'm in the deal now. Do you think that adaptability has helped you get to where you are? Yeah, I think it's helped me and hurt me though, because uh, it, because it's very confusing for people, even people very close to me. I get it. Yeah. So I can I remember it reminds me of a time when uh, Elena and I, my wife, she went, she bought something. I forget what it was. I said, how much was that? And she's like, I don't know. I said, find out how much it was. You got to know what things cost, because mm. that bothered me. Like I, I don't know. And then she told me, I'm like, Elena, that, that was ridiculous. We, we didn't need it. It's the, you know, I could have got a better deal, blah, blah, blah. It, it, and it was no money. I don't know. It was 500 bucks or something. Literally three minutes later, I was negotiating a deal and bought it for $62 million or something. Something ridiculous. So I went from being micromanaging, probably incorrectly, mm -hmm. over 500 bucks to spend the $60, $60 million. And, she, and she, it was confusing for her. It's confusing for the people around you. You know, when you're making decisions, like on your whiteboard saying, you know what, I'm gonna throw away my main business. I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna go for this other business. It, it, it scares people when you start changing. Rule number eight, never stop learning. I wasn't good at the, the construction work and I wasn't good as a salesperson. So uh, I lost uh, six sales jobs I lost 
And it wasn't until I made a commitment to say, I'm going to get great at this game, which means I need an education. And I started going out and reading books and like you guys have, grabbing audio programs. Was it programs. Zig Ziglar? Uh, I mean, that was, was it? Zig. It was, who, who was the first guy? The first guy I ran into was... Jim Ryan? No, it wasn't Jim. It was... No, it wasn't Brian. No, he's still alive. No, no, it wasn't Napoleon Hill. It was, uh, but but I've read all that stuff. I'll think of the guy's name here. Did something stick out for you though? Because I, you know, you yeah, must, you yeah, must have been yeah. like me. What, you bought what, the audio cassettes and the book, and you stuck them in the car, and you listened to the stuff back then. Yeah, Zig Ziglar dude, stuff. I listened to it. I got to I have goals. I, I listened to it. Like I, I didn't listen to all the guys. Uh huh. I, I, what I would do is go deep on one guy. I would go so deep on that one guy that I knew everything, every little thing. Like I didn't study seven, eight, nine people. I, 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 I know who Zig is and I know who Roan is and all that, but there was a guy that was doing some kind of training in the industry I was in. He had a program and that's all I studied was that program. I listened to that program 5,000 times. I mean, without exaggeration, in the morning, at night, in the morning, at night, over and over. I never got tired of it. I, I got to where I was discovering little nuances mm -hmm. and pauses and, and then I became a professional. I mean, it was like, and it was almost instant. I became, so, and it was, and, and so, you, was you in the car industry so, before? Well, after? I was in the auto, at that time at 25, I was in the automobile industry, hated the industry, hated the business, uh -huh. didn't really like selling cars. Um, I was in the wrong vehicle. I knew I was frustrated because I knew I was in the wrong, I couldn't get rich there. It was impossible. And um, so when I started my business at 30 and I said, I'm going to go teach people a different way to sell things. Because one thing that happened and listened to the, all these trainers was there was a lot of trickery going on. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of these guys were just speakers. They I found never, that made later. never made it. Dude, they really people, never yeah. made it as salespeople. They went from salespeople to uh, sales presentations. Yeah. And this was, once I started looking into the space, a lot of charlatans, a lot of the earlier people we talked about, that never had businesses. Mm -hmm. They're like, I created more millionaires, but you don't have a million. Yeah. Like, where's your business, dude? That still exists today. Your, your only business is you you hop around the planet speaking. Like, I, I was in, uh, what, what, where were we last year? Uh, London? And the guy says, you're, you're one of the top three speakers in the world. And the interesting thing is the other two guys are full-time speakers and you're not. I'm running 14 little companies, mm -hmm. you know, on the phones after this, we're, but we're doing deals. We're bouncing on a $200 million deal this morning. And that's what I'm doing every day. Now, it just so happens I, I love people. And I remember that young 25 year old Grant that wanted some help and direction. And so Cardone University was for, for a, way, a way for us to put my material on somebody's phone and be with little Grant before a deal, during a deal, after the deal. Like we literally have people taking, excuse me one second, sir, going out, grabbing a phone, know where the material is, pop in, what would Grant do right now? Yeah. And that, that's the way that program was created. Rule number nine, do not diversify. People don't get wealthy diversifying. They don't accumulate no, wealth. They may preserve it. by. They by preserve it. Later, yeah. later they might do it. Uh, by the way, Warren Buffett would, if Warren Buffett could own all of Coca-Cola or AIG, which is what he started with, he would. He can't. Uh, he, he has, of all his investments, four of his investments, four represent 75% of his entire portfolio. Mark Cuban said that uh, diversification is for idiots. Uh, Elon Musk has three investments in his portfolio, all of ah. which he runs. Steve Jobs had two investments, Pixar and Apple. It is not true. Only the financial planner, only the financial planner who might not even be a millionaire would suggest that you diversify or, or Wall Street or the banks. A banker will tell you to diversify, but there's no banker has got $4 billion worth of assets. So I got $4 billion worth of this real estate right here. And, and you know, I have $2 million worth of uh, Bitcoin. So I only have the Bitcoin because somebody gave it to me. I got, that's, a, that's, still, a, that's a big gift, Grant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, yeah, yeah. So, so I, and I had it a little bit once I understood it, but, or partially understood it. But this stuff right here, look, I know, I know that month cash is garbage. Euros, pounds, pesos, whatever you want to call it, Spanish dollars, it's all garbage. It's completely made up. Um, 
you know, I, I, I like the argument for crypto. I don't like the fact that when you're on the come up and you're 35 years old, what you need more than anything is income. You need a flow of income that you can depend on so that if you're not working or can't work or something happens, you still have income to pay for your rent or pay for your food because you still got to eat. And most people, I haven't seen anybody going to the food, to, to the, to the store and trading their crypto for some whole foods. You mean there's no yield in crypto? There's, there's no, no yield. Cash flow. Exactly. Okay. There's no cash flow. And now, if you're a gambler, dude, and you want to put it all, oh, I would never put it all in. Why wouldn't you? See, this is the question I ask people. Dude, if you know for sure crypto is a play, if you know it's going to the moon, the Dogecoin, if you know for sure it's going to go to 100,000, then put everything in it. You see, I'm not that sure. So because I'm not that sure, I can't make that big bet. And the way to create real wealth is to make massive bets. If particularly, particularly with your story about, hey, I don't want to wait till I'm 90 years old. And Warren, by the way, Warren started when he was 50. He didn't make any real money till he was 50 years old. But I would just tell people, look, if you want to make massive money, then you need to put, you need to go all in first on you, second on your business, not on real estate or crypto. The best return in the world is your business. The best return in the world is an idea. I got an idea. I'm going to write a book. I go out and sell a million copies of a book. There's no better return than that because it came from nothing, right? It came from the mud. Um, now, once you got money coming in from the book sales, how do you protect the money? Okay. Well, you, you go all in on one stock. Uh, you could go buy Amazon today for $3,500. $3, but I'll tell you, this piece of real estate right here will make more money for me and my family than Amazon will ever make. Because what will happen with this real estate that you can't do with Amazon and you can't do with Bitcoin, I'm going to wait 10 years on this piece of real estate. I'm going to take all my capital out of the deal. I'm going to refinance it, still own the asset and get my down payment back. So I'll get my $70 million back or $7 million, whatever the number is. This is a big, big deal. So it's $230 million. I could take it down to 20 million or I could take it down to two. It's the same math all the way across the board. It's just different zeros. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. No, yeah. no. But, but this asset class, this particular asset class allows the everyday person to create wealth in a way that Wall Street has been doing for years, which is I buy an asset. It goes up in value because the, because the income goes up without my effort. And then when it goes up in value, I refinance it, grab my initial monies out of it. Now I have that money back. It's a non-taxable event worldwide, by the way. Worldwide, that becomes a non-taxable event. I refinance the property, it continues to cash flow and pay me money, but I have no money in it. This is the true wealth formula uh, which, where, where we're using leverage against an increased assets value going forward. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is help others. I would pick helping people over everything. Over everything. Right. So, so uh, only because my heart kind of pulls me to help people because I wanted help when I was a kid. Yeah. And um, I didn't have anybody to help me and it was frustrating. And I just, I, I have this personal promise that I made years ago that if I ever made it, I would, um, I would stay revealed mm -hmm. and I would help people. I would show them what I'm doing. So, um, and that thing pulls at me. It probably costs me, you know, a lot of time and energy because, but, but it pulls me. It's just, it's kind of like a mission. To, uh, Steve Harvey told me once, he's like, you know, Steve Harvey, he's got this beautiful saying about he, his career is what pays his bills, but his mission is what pays his heart or mm -hmm. something like that. He oh, says wow. it much better than I do. Spirituality is the number one, one most important thing to me in my life. Like my, before my wife and my kids is my understanding of God. Yeah. And, and my dreams come from that connection and that understanding. And my, my dreams and my goals are not really financial. It's potential. So, so, so when I talk about, you know, people ask me, the, the, probably the most painful question I get is when is enough enough? And I'm like, man, you guys ought to check in with God on that. Yeah. Right? Because, because my, my potential is what I'm going after. It's not, it's not some number. I got a guy asking me about my net worth. I'm like, dude, what, what, it's a stupid question. 
it's an ego. It's an ego. It's an ego thing, right? I, yeah. What I'm interested in is my potential, possibility, discovery, and 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 for me, that potential is the thing that strings me and God. And that potential is my dreams. It's like what what could I do? What's possible? And the the other thing is about the blessing. You know, you you hear people. I was in Atlanta. And I'm like, man, I'm blessed, and everybody's like, oh yeah, praise the Lord. I'm like, yeah, everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. I've never met somebody that's not blessed. Most people are not proving it, though. They're blessed and not validating God every day. Wow. So uh, I, I have a very, very powerful, very strong, and very clear uh, understanding of my relationship with God, and it is first and foremost with me. Other people won't understand it, right? But, but, but I, every, every, day, every day, every deal, undoing a deal like, I've undone deals. Hey, guys, this deal is no longer good for me. And that was me at my, my highest ethical. What do you mean? You got a deal? We got a deal. You signed a contract. That's right. And now we're going to undo this deal. And I'm going to undo it. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to figure it out. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, hey, this deal is not good for me. And if it's not good for me, it's not good for my family. It's not good for my future. It's not good for my, my ability to give to charities. It's not good for you either. So rather than me just walking away, why don't we just rework the deal so that we're both happy and everybody wins? Very difficult thing to do. But you allow that because to be another your person, driver. Because another person might be bound by that agreement. They're like, no, no, we have a deal. I have to do what I said I'm going to do because they're bound by some rule that they made some agreement. Hey, if that agreement's no longer good for you, no God would want you to continue. What you'd want to do is communicate, which is harder to do. Yeah. You know, so so the ability for my wife and I to communicate about anything, even if it's tough and it's, you know, it's, you know, ha 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 believing in God is more than just believing in God. It takes courage to, to go out every day and validate it. Because if you actually believe, you have to do. And you ought to do well, too. And yeah. if you have a, you know, to, to me in my mind, like, you know, if I have, if I have a good really strong, good working relationship with God, I would be successful at everything. Physically, in my marriage, in business, with my customers, online. I would have good reviews, not bad reviews. Yeah. Like, you ought to have the whole package. I don't think, I don't, I don't think God had a par partial package. I think it was probably the whole deal. And the other thing is the work thing, you know? Like, I see a lot of people that believe in God that don't work. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, but, you know, they're taking two and three days off. God don't even take that much time off. <laughs> <laughs> he takes one day off. Yeah. And look what he did before he took the day off. What you become is what you will be. Most people are sitting in a student chair too long. You're learning. You're like learning, studying, reading, you know, trying to get information. Dude, the, the, way, to, the way to trick the system is to become something as fast as possible. Don't keep learning. Buy something. This is the easiest, simplest way for somebody to become an investor. I did the deal. I bought the deal with my money, did the research with my money, my time, my energy, my 30 years. I used my cred with the banks and the real estate community to get the deal. That deal is $260 million. Your entire audience could not buy that deal by itself, even if it had the money because it doesn't have the connection. Yep. So I'm paying, I'm buying the deal with my money and my, bank, uh, my, my debt. Then once I buy it and close it, I've taken all this risk out. Because once I buy it and close it, then I offer it up to my audience and say, same price that I pay, you can get in at. $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, whatever number you're comfortable with. So what happens is, one, your money's protected against inflation and deflation, okay, against the disruption and destruction of the dollar, which is what we're, what's happening right now is they are purposely destroying the dollar. The very thing they told you for the last 30 years, you should save and you should, you should, you know, trade your most valuable asset for. They are now destroying the very thing that you've been saving. And they're penalizing you for having it because they pay you nothing to keep it. Understand that, that a thousand, and I'm going to answer your whole question here. Understand that a thousand dollars today at Bank of America or Wells Fargo, let me see, $1,000 today times pays $1.20. Let me see. Yeah, that's $1.20 anyway. Ridiculous. Crazy.
Okay. Now that's before you bought your checks. That's before you started the, the, the checking account. That's before you use the ATM. By the time the end of the year is your thousand dollars, probably more like 920 bucks, probably cost you 80 bucks just to have a checking account. So number one, you become an investor. Number two, you get cash flow every quarter. Number three, I expect that building to be a double or a triple. So I'm paying 260 for the building. If I sell it for 340, we make a double. I think the building is going to sell for 500 million when I sell it. The location's ridiculous, can't replace it. It's 99% occupied right now. It's a trophy quality asset. It's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, one of the hottest markets in the country. And when I sell this, I will be selling it to an institution. And the reason that's important is because most of us that are earning 50 bucks a night, you have to buy the leftovers, man. You know, the, 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 we're buying leftovers. We're buying, we're buying the garbage in the community, the duplex, the single family home. These are the same homes that went back to the banks in 2010. And you don't want to be in that stuff. What you want to be is the trophy stuff that somebody always finds value in. Yep. So I think the return is uh, 5 to 6% in the first year, paid out quarterly. Uh, we pass through the depreciation to you, so you won't be paying taxes for the first couple of years on your income. Um, and uh, I think you get a double or a triple uh, off your money. So if you put in ten grand, I think you're looking at your money being twenty or thirty thousand over the next uh, five, six, seven years. The third thing the super successful do is they master income creation. I was asked this morning. I left my home at four o'clock in the morning. I was on a plane at five. Okay, and a guy asked me, he's like, dude, why are you still cranking so hard? Because I don't have any money. I'm always broke. I reinvest all the money. Every time I get any money sitting in accounts, I take it and invest it in hard assets. Illiquid assets. Illiquid so that I cannot get that money. That's what keeps me motivated, folks. I get money, liquid money, if it's not used, what? It's useless. Take it and I buy a hard asset that produces income. I'm broke, I gotta go hustle again. The thing is not to just be positive, not even to offer this no negativity policy that I talk about. The way to avoid uh, negative and distracting people, man, is to vibrate at a rate so fast okay, that you're out in front of them. Once I got a speeding ticket, actually here in Miami, and the, and the police officer says, why, why, why are you speeding? Why are you in such a hurry? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to stay away from the crazies, okay? If I can just get ahead of everybody else, I'm not distracted by anybody but guys like you. And your job is to stop me, but the truth is their job is to stop me, distract me, and cause me to turn around and, and, and stop my mission. See, so I got my ticket and moved on and went to the head of the pack again. See, this is what I'm telling you, man. Look, if you want to not be bogged down by negative, distracted people, you need to take responsibility that you're slowing down enough to get caught up by this magnetic charge of distractive and negative people. Dude, you need to vibrate so fast that these people are distracting other people, not you. Get way ahead of the crowd. Get so busy that nobody's gonna jack with you, man, because you're filling up your pipeline, you're full, you're busy, and you don't have this stuff sticking to you. Look, if you got negative people around you, if you got distracted people, and we all do, but if it's causing you to be distracted and negative, dude, you need to vibrate. You need to fill up your pipeline. You need to explode, blow up, get busy. So this isn't happening to you because you're partly responsible. Fill your pipeline up. To have life balance, you got to have money. Like, yeah. This is the taboo thing to say. It's never going to be on TV. Nobody likes. You got to have money. Nobody's. Nobody will ever says this. Yeah. Oh, you, I do this. I do that. I have blah. Uh, dude, you got to have money. You can't. You can't. You know what? What do I mean by that? Like, okay, well, like, create the life you want. Yeah. Quit saving money. You know, quit buying watches and H belts. Like, I don't have an Hermes belt. Like, I didn't even know how to pronounce Hermes. I'm like, well, who would spend <laughs> seven, eight hundred bucks on a belt? Like, yeah. like I could buy $3,000 worth of real estate with a $700 belt, right? And who am I trying to impress anyway? What I need is I need a trainer to come to me. So you buy your Hermes belt, I'm going to buy a trainer to come to me. I don't want to go to him. Okay, I don't, time is money. It's not money, it's time. 
it's time is money. So uh, why am I going to get in a car and drive to, 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 to the trainer? Here, you, I'll give you another 200 bucks. You come to me. Okay, you come to me. I walk down there. I do my workout. Boom, I'm done. Well, he's, he's still driving 40 minutes, and I'm already taking a shower and, and, and doing a business deal. So you got to figure out the things in your life. You know, when I, when I, when I went from, okay, I'm never going to do, I'm never going to work for below my pay grade anymore. Like, this was a big shift for me. Like, I like gardening. I like landscape stuff, right? When I got rid of a yard, I was like, that, was, that, that probably made me 10 million bucks. I loved it. I spent too much time doing it. It was costing me money. It was below my pay grade. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, oh, because it's therapeutic. Well, good, man. Like, like not two hours of it. It's, it therapeutic's costing you millions of dollars because you're out there playing with stuff. That made me feel good and everything, but there's got to be a faster, better way to do that, to get that sensation. 12 years ago, we had done maybe, I don't know, $20 million over the internet. We've done over a billion dollars in sales over the internet in the last 12 years, okay? Thank you. Like, you guys gotta learn how to use enthusiasm. Like, when you use it, use it. Like, the more you use, the more you get. You're like, I'm gonna save my energy now. I don't wanna give him too big a hand too early. It's really early today, come on. Look, man, when somebody's successful, you ought to throw it out. That's what I'm talking about. See, you guys, you guys got to, y'all got, y'all got to quit trying little tricks and gimmicks. Like if you got to walk on fire to get excited, you are cranked up. Like, like if you can't at will, whenever you want to, for any reason, just get excited, then you got a problem. Okay, because in real in the real world, you can't you can't be in the middle of a meeting and I'm trying to get her to give me like a hundred million dollars and I'm not I'm feeling a little depressed or bad right now or I got my attention on my kids and and I'm like okay, everybody's gonna be like nah we were gonna give you the hundred until you started pumping your chest, right? You can't say hang on a second man I got to go into a state change, like that's not real. You guys understand? You have to be able to that's a gimmick. And gimmicks take time, okay? And gimmicks cannot be duplicated. What can be duplicated are disciplines. And that's what you're gonna be, we're gonna be sharing with you over the next three days. Disciplines can be duplicated. If you've seen my children, okay? If you've, how many of you have seen Sabrina and Scarlett? Oh, yeah. Those are disciplines, okay? If they were in here right now, they could get on that stage and talk to you. They know how to look you in the eyes. They know how to shake your hand because they have been taught how to communicate. We spend less time on teaching them how to count than we do communicate, connect with people, okay? We have them homeschool. The homeschool teacher, what do you want them to learn? You just keep teaching them what I'm teaching them. You teach them confidence. You teach them poise. You teach them the ability to communicate. Be dangerous, not careful, okay? We teach our kids how to be dangerous. I, I teach my kids how to meet strangers and greet strangers. We teach our kids that strangers have everything they want and strangers are not dangerous, okay? Is there danger in the society? Yeah, that's what those guys are for over there. So I'm gonna put my kids in an environment where they can meet 99% of the people and feel safe to meet them, talk to them, communicate with them. So I wanna make sure that my kids can walk into an environment and have zero concern about him, her, or him. And they can walk out and say, hey, I want to meet you because strangers have everything that you want. The people you don't know and haven't met. These guys, these guys dressed in their robes. What do you call the robes? The condor. OK, I have one in my closet, by the way. I love the condor. I put the condor on one time and I was like, I'm a bad, bad man. <laughs> Dude, I felt so freaking powerful. It was amazing. OK, I grew a beard. I'm like, now I'm a man. OK, give me a camel. Okay, it was like it was like phenomenal, right? Like, but but you you guys need to have that kind of swag everywhere in life. And regardless of how old you are, 25 and you're like, I'm too young to have swag, or 55 and now you're too old, it's not true. You just need to get the confidence, the bravado, not fake it. You don't need to fake it. You need to you need to get you need to get confidence. If I could get rid of this right here in life, if I could get rid of these downs, man, how confident would I be? I mean, like I'm going into every deal, I'm a win. 
And that is possible, folks, okay? But it starts with, who knows me? Because if I'm walking around this planet and nobody knows me, I'm gonna be terrified. You better get excited now, because if you're not gonna get excited now, nobody will give you this money. Nobody will give you this money. Money follows attention. How much attention can I get in the marketplace is where money goes. Money does not go to the best product, ever. Money does not go to the best product. Money does not go to the happiest place either. Money goes to where attention goes. Whoever gets the most attention gets the most money. Action, massive action, has always worked. It's proven itself for thousands of years. This is not a new concept. You show me somebody, and we know their name, anybody, anybody in the, in, in the room, any famous person that you can think of, anybody, that we would both know. You say, I'm going to mention their name, and Grant will know who that is. Give me a name of one person. Tiger Woods. Massive action. Persistent massive action. Okay? Okay, how many people were watching the, the Open yesterday? Yeah, exactly. Why? Because Tiger was in it. Attention, money follows attention. Money follows attention. How much attention can you get? Even bad attention. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. What Tiger went through in the last decade helped him. You got more white people pulling for Tiger Woods, right? They're like, Tiger, grown white men, Tiger. And we say there's division in this country. Tiger, I love Tiger, right? Why? Because they love a comeback, man. The guy got a lot of attention. Okay, who else? Give me another name. Oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know it was gonna be this kind of meeting. <laughs> if I didn't know it was gonna be this kind of meeting, I'd charge you double. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Everybody knows him, okay? Money follows attention. Success and power follow attention. Okay, you can not like the guy, but could you handle that much heat every day? Could you handle that many people not liking you every day? Because if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be a real leader, okay, if you're going to be at the top of the food chain kind of leader, people aren't going to like you. It's the question that everybody asks, yeah. how do you do it all? Dude? Yeah. Like, like what you do, if you want to get it, if you want to do it all, quit, quit uh, compromising on what it takes to do it all. And, you know, the, the, the thing that we confront at my house is money. And this is the thing that most people are not confronting. They're not confronting money. What they're doing is they do budgets. We have enough money to do this. I don't do a budget. What I do is, what do I want? How much money does it take? Yeah. And then I go create the money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is what we did thousands of years ago when you hunted. If you were hungry, you're like, I'm hungry. What do we want to eat? Well, whatever. You, 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 what can we eat? What can we kill? What can we go? And, and my job, my job back then was to go out. And, and, and not, not come home, dude, until like, I didn't have anybody to blame. You can blame Brexit. You can blame, you, you can blame everybody you want to blame. Yeah, but, yeah. but if your kids need to eat, yeah, yeah. right? So th back then it was like, get food. Now it's like, people are like, I'm just going to take whatever they give me. And I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to make sense of it as opposed to like, what life do I want? I need a nanny. Okay. <clears throat> I, I don't want my kids to go to school. I went to school. I went there, I sat with the other little uh, numb nut uh, uh, loser kids that I was. I was there to distract every child in the room, okay? I had no interest in the class. My job was to make sure he didn't learn anything and that you and I had fun and that the teacher uh, went home um, uh, and had the worst day of her life. Yeah. <laughs> I hated school. So... Um, I hated every second of it. I don't want to do that to my kids. So what do I need? Oh, I need a nanny. What's a nanny cost? 80 grand a year. Oh, then I got to bring her around with me and feed her. Mm. And then I got to put her in a hotel room. So I need another room. So you guys start doing the math on all this. Okay, I don't want to, I, I got my nanny. I got two, ki uh, two kids with us. Uh, I got, oh, we want to travel around the world. What's that going to cost? What's it cost to be gone 30 days and be in nice places that are secure, service, a chef? Mm. Like, no, no, none of our parents got us ready for the, that kind of budget. Yeah. So it's they, 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 what they said was get a good job. Your, that job will pay 85,000 pounds. And make do with what And make got. do with the yeah. 85,000. It's yeah. the wrong way to do yeah. the math, dude. What kind of life do you yeah. want? Not, not what can you make sense of. What kind of life would allow you to have, to be able to do work and life? Yeah. Uh, oh, wow, man. You know what? If I'm going to, if I'm going to, you know, travel, I need a plane, dude. 
Then you got a new calculation to do. Then I need pilots. Then I need a place to keep the plane. Then I need insurance. And all of a sudden, the whole thing gets really complicated. And you're like, damn, I need some money. <laughs> but now, yeah. now, now you start you start picking what, what would produce enough money. You start thinking creatively. Once you commit, you start thinking creatively. Again, look, I started with nothing. For me to be doing what I'm doing today, it's because I'm committed to figuring out. I'm as committed to this as the drug addict is committed to, yeah. to the heroin. And he has no money. But he has no money. He, his reputation sucks. He, never, he, he owes every drug dealer in town. And he'll still get his fix. He'll still figure out how to get his deal. Money's garbage. It's garbage. It's not, it's not really what you want because it gets taxed heavily. So, and this is another thing the ball players don't understand this. Most of the middle class doesn't understand it. The guy making 50 racks a year doesn't. The guy making 500 racks a year doesn't understand it. The guy working at Facebook doesn't understand. He knows how to code. He don't know how to beat the tax man. And the way to beat the tax man is with real estate. It is the last venue where, and I'm not talking about a house. I'm talking about buying like this piece of real estate right behind me right there. That piece of real estate is $260 million. Now, I didn't start with that. My first deal was my first deal was a three million dollar deal. I made five million on it. One deal. And paid no taxes. And when I did that first deal, man, I did. I put three hundred fifty grand down. I borrowed it from my mom and a brother. Uh, and made five. I turned three hundred fifty grand into five million dollars and didn't have to go through the bullshit that I was going through every single day. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a game, man. When I went to file my taxes, the guy showed me how not to pay taxes on it. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And I've been doing that. I now have $4 billion worth of real estate. I started with three hundred grand, borrowed money. I got $4 billion. This deal right here is a quarter of a billion. And what I've learned over the last 25 years is this game is on, it's on, it's a rigged game and it's on stack. It's all, it's all stacked against the little guy and the middle guy. And so what I decided to do was, was uh, I promised my mom when I was 15 years old, Dorian, I said, if I ever make it, I'm going to help the little guy out. Because I grew up with a single mother, five kids. She was freaking frightened all it. She never got a shot at that stuff. <laughs> you know, if my family got to buy a house that they ha- we ha- you got to pay for, if we could buy a house and pay it off, that was freaking like that was the American dream. That ain't a dream, bro. That's prison. That right there behind me, cash flow day one, trophy asset, appreciation two and three and four times. Most of this real estate's been doubling every every decade. Uh, Trophy, institutional quality, great write-offs, everything the wealthy look for in an investment. So I'm buying this deal, and then I open it up to my friends and followers on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, $1,000. With $1,000, you can partner with me in that deal. And it's important for everybody to know, like, oh, my God, this guy's going to raise money from everybody. I could have gotten one company, one bank would have given me the entire amount of money that I'm raising for my friends. One, one bank said, hey, I'll give you the whole two. I'll give you all the money for the deal. And you, you'd be the partner in the deal, Grant. You run the deal. We'll be the money. And I didn't take the money. Because I want my friends, my followers, the people on this. I want to give people a shot. So uh, because you're, you're easier to deal with, Dorian, I'd rather you be my partner in the deal than Bank of America. How did you get started? Like, what was your first company? What did it look like? How, how did it all that happen? My first company was working for somebody else. You know, like until uh, it wasn't until I figured out how to make somebody else rich that I could be, be rich. Like, I hear a lot of guys saying, oh, I don't, I don't want to work for somebody else. I don't want to keep making other people when I became successful in another company and then left that company and went and worked for another company and made them super successful to the point to where these companies were literally dependent upon me. Like that, that, that's the thing, that's the muscle and the grit, the, the uh, pers- persistence and fortitude of like, you know what, I don't, my ego wasn't like, I need my name on it, but my ego was strong enough to say, I wanna be the best in the company. Like, I wanna make this company dependent upon me. The first company, the first real job I had was my sixth job. I was fired from my first five. Fired from my sixth job six times, but wouldn't leave the last one. I just would not leave. So literally like, 
I wreck stuff. I, I, I have a, t a terrible driving record, and I, and I was in the car business, and I'd wreck their cars, and, and they'd fire me, and I'd say, okay, okay, okay. And I had a bunch of other problems as well, but, and then before I would leave, I would go sell something, and then they would keep me on. If for, selling something was always forgiveness. So um, when I finally left that company, they went under. Like they could, my production was so high that one person leaving, the entire company failed. Went to my next job, which was speaking, consulting, using my sales um, philosophies and gifts, if you will, uh, and we would go around companies and teach them. And I worked for him for 20 months. I was like the top guy in his company. Now, the, the reason I'm saying that is that was a job for me and that was a business. I treated that little, my little department like this is my company within a company. And, and I wanted to make that company as strong as possible so that when I, made, when I finally went out on my own, which I was forced to go out on my own, I, I didn't want to go out on my own. I went out on my own just because there was just no opportunity left. And there, there was no way for me to score where I was, which I, I still remember today. It's important to get good people to keep them, that, like you gotta give them some other pond to, to, to swim in. And so when I started my first company, at, uh, I guess I was 29, um, that was a company where I was cold calling on businesses around the U.S. and Canada. What are you willing to give up? You guys got to keep assessing the situation and not be, not be broad stroke about it and say, oh, I'm not going to be a dilettante or I'm going to be a professional. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, no, no, but what are you going to give up? There are times though, again, when I will give up that agreement. See, like one of the things I have on here, being right. You have to give up being right. You know, you can't, can't want to be, be, be right and be successful. They don't, they don't even go together. It's impossible. So again, I'm willing to give up being right. I just got to, don't quit, man. If you don't quit, if you don't quit, you can't fail. It's impossible. Failure becomes impossible for those that don't quit. It's impossible. Just think about it. If I keep moving towards the destination, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm going through the alphabet, a, B, C, D, E. Dude, if you just keep going all the way to Z, you finish the alphabet. You break your leg along the way, somebody cuts your tongue out, you get waterboarded, you get a divorce, you lose your dad, you lose a puppy. If you get the Z, you finish the alphabet, period. And boy, when I heard that, I'm like, God damn, what was I thinking? I was thinking I could fail. I can't fail if I don't quit. So, so that means I gotta get rid, I gotta dump people out of the car though along the way, right? but we had to get rid of a whole bunch of people. I, I have to get rid of people. How many people have, been, have gone, Johnny? Huh? I mean, guys, like if you saw the wreckage, like so many, you don't see it, you know? Or, or, I'm not saying get rid of people. I'm just saying like, 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 what are you willing to give up? Okay, on my list, I've given up a house. I've given up money. I gave up my retirement accounts. I had millions of dollars sitting in retirement accounts. I paid the penalty to get the money because it was a mistake years ago. I got convinced by the banks to build an IRA or a 401k because I was trying to figure out how to exit. Actually, the people that were giving me the advice were telling me to figure out how to exit. You're planning an exit when you're 30, and it's stupid. Think about what you're doing. You're not going to retire until you're 70, and the rich people never worry about their retirement accounts. Warren Buffett has not got a 401k. He's got Coca-Cola. See the difference? See the difference in the think? Okay, so, so like, like you, you guys have to take a look at what you know that is now a liability. What you know to be true that has become a liability for you. And if you just study the middle class of America, study the entire structure of a, the American economy, you will see you will see where a lot of these liabilities exist that, that are, 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 are core values that you have. Not just for you, but for the entire population of people. And, and like, if you just look at the structure of America, 311 million people, most of them are not doing well. You hear about it every day. So the solution is let's give everybody college. Let's give everybody college. Well, college could be one of the problems. Look, you know, 
Let's make sure everybody gets through high school. Okay, could be one of the problems actually, that it takes 12 years to learn how to count. And still no product, really. So anyway, I'm not saying, I'm not worried about try, trying to change all that. I'm just saying, you might want to look at how some of that has influenced you. You know, the retirement accounts, the life insurance. How many of you got life insurance? How many of you got some cash value sitting there, some hope? Dude, get the money. Don't wait till you die. I want to share with you the uh, not so secret way that thousands, tens of thousands, actually millions of people are becoming millionaires in America today. They invest in assets that appreciate over time. They invest in assets, in IPs that they control, royalties they control, things that they know over time will increase in value, that there's a 99.9% 99, 99 .9 chance that they're gonna increase in value, and that's what they invest in. They don't make little bets, they make big bets, and they invest in things that they know will go up in value over time. That could be a sports team, uh, chances you buying a sports team are next to none. Same for me. So you got to start thinking about, okay, what assets can I do that with? Okay. Oh, wow. I'm going to go create, I'm going to go create the next big thing. I'm going to create an app and hundreds of millions of people are going to download my app. Okay. Chances of you doing that are, uh, your, your chances are bigger than mine because I'm not even trying. There are assets out there today that or in your backyard, they're in your neighborhood. You don't have to buy a sports team. You don't need to be connected. You don't have to have a, you don't have to know how to write code or do tech. It's sitting there waiting for you right now. And it's one of the ways that I created the wealth that I have in my life. I have, we have 11 businesses today. Uh, and, and then we have a real estate portfolio of 12,000 units going to 40,000 units and, uh, about $4 billion worth of real estate. Now, the first, the 11 businesses that I own, man, they were so hard to create them, start them, manage them, guide them, hire people for them, advertise, market, get them known, like to organize it. We have hundreds and hundreds of employees in these companies, uh, about 700 employees across these companies, most of which are startups. They're brand new. They don't have a lot of employees. A lot of risk, a lot of downside, a lot of problems, a lot of headaches, a lot of people. The real estate? Almost no headaches. Compared to the value of the portfolio, very few people work at it. It appreciates the value over long periods of time, and that's what wealthy people do. They invest in assets. Real estate is one of the things they love. Be a better guy, man. I mean, you yeah. know, just be a good guy and be, be, you know, the thing I'm proud of is I get to be Grant all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm like, hey, man, I, I finally got to be what I, I, I finally became what I wanted to be. Mm. What you was know, that? Me. Yeah. You know, that, that I don't have to apologize anymore. And then I quit mm. screwing up and I quit having to call people and say, hey, man, I, I said I went too far. You know, if I could just pull some of that back without that drug that that, that psychiatrist was trying to use. Right. You know, that if I'm less dependent upon aggression, you know, and I could I could kind of manifest more. You know, like you, you talk about. Let it, let it flow more. Let yeah. it flow, dude. Yeah. Let it flow, you know, but. <laughs> But if I could get that perfect balance of aggression and flow. <laughs> That's a sweet you know, spot, yeah. It's sweet, dude. It's hard to find that thing. That's a sweet too. spot. You know, to be that, I don't want to be, I, want, I don't want to be the little stream that drips. You know, I want to be like, mm -hmm. but I don't want to damage anybody. Right. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be in competition anymore. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to lose the edge. Right. You know? <laughs> it's a dance. It, dude, it's a dance. It's a dance, man. You know? Like, like your girl said to me the other night, she's like, she said something before she left. She's like, I really get who you are, mm. you know, that, and that hits me mm. when people say that to me. Most people don't get who I am. Mm. That's beautiful. You know, and, and she said, I really get who you are. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people don't. Yeah. And, and it, sometimes it hurts, right? Because I know who I really am. Yeah. And, but I also know the things I'm trying to accomplish for me, you know, like Ryan, Ryan gets who I am, mm. you know. Ryan, Ryan never takes me on. Man, you're you're the best, Grant. You're the best. <laughs> he just he strokes me right right yeah, through yeah. it. And 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 you know my wife, I can see my wife. She gets she gets tired of the 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 pounding, you know. But hey, man, I just you know I'm a right handed hitter, you know. Yeah. Or I got I got a certain ball that I throw, a yeah. certain shot I make, and yeah. it's my go to, you know. And when when I get threatened, I'm gonna go to that 
and I, if I could develop some other set of skills, mm -hmm. you know, that would be that would be a cool thing. This is insanity that pe that you're being told don't monetize your your business. If you have a good business, have a good service, have a good product, sell it. You know, but so many guys are they're they're trying these little kid kid gimmicks. You know, it's fine if my kids flip shoes on 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 eBay. If you're an adult, man, you got to get beyond flipping sneakers on eBay. You need to build a business. Otherwise, don't call yourself an entrepreneur because that's not what an entrepreneur is. An entrepreneur is not flipping shit on eBay. That's not a business. That's you trying to make $2 on a toy that you bought at a garage sale. It's a different gig. Now, if you can figure out how to scale that, but it sounds to me like you're, you're benefiting eBay more than you're benefiting yourself. E eBay, eBay is the pimp, and you're basically the prostitute in that machinery, which is no problem with that, right? Mm. But you're servicing the, the machine rather than building your own machine. I want to build a machine. I want to build a machine that lives l longer than I do, so that th if I get a good partnership with somebody and we cut a deal, and they're 90% of the profits in future, and I'm 10%, and my kids and my charity get to keep that 10 after I'm dead, man, I'm good to go. So what's next? Like, go the jet, like what, what's next, man? <sighs> man, I don't well, know. What's 10X for you now? 10X is, you know, how do I do a billion dollars a year in, 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 in income? And then how do I do 10 billion in real estate? How do I have a $10 billion real estate portfolio? We paid, last month we paid uh, $1.4 million out in distribution, I'm, I'm sorry, last month. We paid 1.4 million in U.S. dollars out to our uh, to our investors in the real estate. How do I start compete with these banks? So they're like, you know what? We really don't like all this noise you're making. You're a noisy guy, and we're kind of getting tired of it now. When you get noisy enough, they either buy you and suppress you. You know that's what Bill Gates would did with with Apple years ago. The tablet, the original iPhone, was a little uh, called. Um, what was the name of that little beast? Um, anyway, it had a little pen you wrote on it. They buried that project oh, for yeah. years. Yeah. Um, I'll think of it in a second. I'll think of it when the interview's over. Maybe you guys know what it is, okay? Anyway, it's probably 20 years ago. I actually had a company built around this thing, and Bill Gates came in, gave Apple Steve Jobs a loan, and said, look, I'll lend you this money. You gotta bury that product. And they did. So that's what you can do, or they consume you. They buy you and say, hey, we want you to be part of our... So maybe, maybe that's what happens, Nathan. I don't know. I don't know. Get the, get, the, get the audio guy, the audio guy to get a good sticker for the mic. Three things you got to know about money, and the same three rules hold true for attention. Number one, you got to get it. You don't need to make it. It's already been made. There's trillions and trillions of dollars. There's more money on this planet than there are iPhones. Okay? Endless supply. Okay, it's like, it's garbage, by the way. You need to understand it's garbage. Once I get it, the thing to do is once I get it, now I don't want to lose it. How do I not lose it? I take it and I convert it to something more valuable than money. So as fast as I can, I'm going to take this cash that I earned. I don't spend it ever. Never spend this money. No matter how big the bag is, I take the entire earned bag and I dump it into something that becomes that will produce passive income for me. The only thing I ever spend is the $100 that comes out of the building, not the bag that I earned because of my talent. I take my talents, I get paid for them, I shift it into the building, the money goes away. Money can't be lost now. It's been converted to concrete, glass, steel, tenants, leases, uh, real property, okay? It goes up in value over time. This gets destroyed over time. It can be, get burnt, it can get torn, it can get uh, lost, it can get uh, stolen. So I want to get rid of this illiquid. I want to get illiquid in the building, convert it to something real, and then I want to wait. When I get paid passive income, this passive income is not taxed. It's only taxed. It's taxed up a small, tiny percentage of what earned income is. So I keep most of it, and this is how I live. I live off of this money, and, and I could spend all of this, or I could take this and start investing in more buildings. The way you talk so to me. get it, Go get ahead. it, keep it. Number two, you got to keep it. How do I keep it? I don't save it at the bank. 
When you put it to bank, the bank is going to tax it. Cash is taxed. Yeah. All cash is taxed. Okay. Cash is not king. Cash flow is king. So what you want is you want this. You want passive income. And the third thing you want to do is you want to figure out how it can multiply. That building will multiply over time. There's nobody that's going to tell me that building will not be more money. Right location, like, like the cities we're buying in, Austin, Houston, Dallas, Orlando, Tampa, uh, the Carolinas, Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, if you're on fire, Savannah, Georgia, anything in the, in the smiley part of the United States where New York, when the vaccine, when they came out last night and said, hey, we're mandating, I got calls from three buddies. I'm f- done with New York. I thought they were going to change. They're not. New York is going to feed that building. 20% of our tenants right now are from New York City. 10% are from California, moving from LA all the way over to Miami. So people are tired of the bullshit, man. And, 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 and when they're tired of that, what they do is they move. And when they move, they rent first. They don't yeah. buy first. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from me, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. People have already figured out the thing that you are struggling to figure out. And the more you are stuck trying to come up with every idea yourself, the harder you're making it on yourself. And this is, man, this is one of the 